one of the great things about soccer is how little investment you have to do in the equipment. We just talked about the field equipment. There's only a couple of things you need for field equipment. Likewise, there's only a few things you need for player equipment. Socks, shin guards, cleats, and uh, you're pretty much ready to go. So let's talk about socks for a minute. I This is what I do for my little guys. I put a medium length sock on them and then their shin guards over that. The shin guards have straps, some have a sleeve. It often irritates the skin, particularly when they get sweaty. So that will rub against the calf muscle and it can cause shin guard rash if you don't have a sock underneath them. So put a medium length sock on them, shin guards get them in place, and then put a long sock over the shin guards to hold them in place. It works great and it avoids shin guard rash. It also helps to keep the shin guards from smelling funky. You know, you get a couple of practices in August and people get sweaty in those shin guards. Well, you just don't want to be around them for long. Speaking of shin guards, they're absolutely essential anytime your player takes the field. There are a variety of types and sizes, but most importantly, you want to get the ones that are NOCSE approved. Since 2008, the National Operating Committee on Standards for Athletic Equipment has been testing and approving shin guards. Look for the NOCSE stamp on the shin guard itself or the tag inside the guard. Some shin guards have a little tag, you know, like a how to wash them, you know, wash them in hot water thing. It will have the NOCSE stamp there. So here's a web address to the shin guard guide at soccer.com. It's really helpful to help you find the right type and size for your soccer player. So it's https colon slash slash www.soccer.com slash guide slash shin guard guide. Follow that and you can learn all about what type of shin guard will work best for your player. But basically the guidelines are this. Defenders need the most protection. They need a heavy shin guard with extra ankle protection. They're going to be involved in a lot of collisions. If your soccer player is a midfielder, they need protection, but they also need to move freely so they can use a lighter shin guard. Forwards need the lightest shin guard possible with protection and ankle support because they're going to get banged up by the defenders. And goalkeepers can wear a light shin guard with minimal protection because hopefully they won't be involved in too many shin-to-shin -shin collisions. And lastly, let's talk about the soccer cleats. There are so many different sizes, shapes, colors, styles of cleats. I could talk for a week about cleats. Here are a few, few quick tips. If you're going to use the two method for shin guards, the two sock method for shin guards, you will need to buy cleats a little bit bigger than your normal size for your child. Usually a half size up is about right because you're going to have those two socks taking up some room. Also, consider the type of ground where you live. If your child plays on hard ground or clay, consider a, a turf style shoe with a low cleat. That will give them good contact with the ball and provide better arch support in that type of environment. If you live in a mushy or swampy type area with long grass, get a cleat with long studs for better traction. Most of all, make sure it fits and your child breaks them in. Don't take the cleats out of the box and put them on for the first time 10 minutes before practice starts. I guarantee you that is a surefire way to get blisters and blisters are absolutely no fun and soccer should be fun. Thank you for watching.